Those are the people the e-collar folks should be getting mad at. Grow some cojones, get mad at the people in your own segment of the dog training world who are doing it irresponsibly, not on the people who are dealing with these dogs every day, pretty much, that are coming out to me because they've been lit up so bad with e-collars, now they're out of their minds, it scrambles their brains. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clarify two things that you've heard me say before and help you out with your own dog. So I'm gonna do my stance on e-collars and my stance on your dog sleeping in bed with you. So let's start with the e-collar stuff. I had two sessions today, actually I had three sessions today. Two of them, the dogs had been trained with e-collars and I'm gonna tell you what happened. Okay, here's what they wrote for the first session the e-collar training session. This is the information they gave me. Bodhi was sent off for a two week board and train school at blank, I won't say the name, in the hopes he could walk, walk him normally with our other dogs and maybe even off leash. He came home early when we got a call that they could not help him and that he had, a psycho, he had psychological problems and we needed a Caesar Milan type tra trainer. He had ripped off his Duclaw trying to get out of the muzzle and was bleeding a lot and almost bit the main trainer who had to bring out the strongest e-collar there was at the highest setting to try to control him. So that's one experience that a dog who came out today had had. Then we had another dog come out who had been trained with e-collar and the owners were convinced and probably right that he had two, he was solid one color brown, and then he had these two marks right here where it was gr little tiny gray hairs coming about, out about that far. They are convinced that that dog, who was also sent away to a trainer, they had shocked him so much that the, there was actually different color hair, li two little areas of different color hair growing out. And they're probably not wrong, actually. So, here, the, the e-collar folks are constantly, not constantly, they're not as bad as the purely positive folks, but they comment and they, and, and I read it and, and so I'm gonna clarify some things, okay? I am anti high level e-collars when dealing with dog aggression. I am not anti low level e-collars. Some of the best trainers in the world use low level e-collar stuff. The worst trainers in the world use high level e-collar stuff and light the dog up when it looks at another dog. That's the worst and the other way is fine. I don't do it. They, they are good trainers. I know they are and they, are, they do low level stuff. Great. That's great. But the e-collar folks who, who comment, you guys, you're, you're getting mad at the wrong person. I'm not the one giving you a bad name. The e-collar people, I just gave you two examples and I read directly from a, a, a email essentially that said what these people are doing, what these professional trainers are doing. Those are the people the e-collar folks should be getting mad at. Grow some cojones, get mad at the people in your own segment of the dog training world who are doing it irresponsibly, not on the people who are dealing with these dogs every day pretty much, that are coming out to me because they've been lit up so bad with e-collars, now they're out of their minds, it scrambles their brains. I'm the one dealing with it. So when I say, listen, e-collars are bad for certain things, you guys get mad at me. Get mad at the people in your own industry who are giving you a bad name. I'm not giving you a bad name, I'm the one dealing with it. They're giving you a bad name. Your, your, your anger is misplaced. It's redirected aggression. Get some cojones get mad at your own industry who is doing this stuff to dogs. And if you, if you, that's what you should be doing. Not me. I, I, jumping fences, dogs jumping fences and running around, single greatest, I, I, e collar is the single greatest way to deal with that. I tell people all the time, use an e-collar for that. Go, go call someone else, do it for certain things. You wanna really eliminate jumping fences or counter surfing if you wanted to, I have a way to, I don't need one. But you gotta, you gotta get, get angry at the people who deserve it. And that's people who are giving you a bad name and giving e-collars a bad name, okay? So, I am not anti-e-collar. 
I am anti doing what I read in that email, all right? So hopefully that clarifies a little bit on my stance on e-callers. Hopefully it does. All right, don't let your dog sleep in bed with you. I've had a lot of questions about this. So here's the thing. I have four things if your dog is reactive or aggressive. I say eliminate four things right away. It takes some work, all of them. When you get home, don't let your dog jump on you. This is for reactive stuff. This is not for normal dog, your dog loves everybody stuff. If, you, if your dog loves everybody and it jumps on you and you get home and you don't mind that, I don't mind it, I don't really care. But if it's, it could be affecting with that aggressive dog, with that reactive dog, you fix the jumping, you're gonna help that dog being aggressive to other dogs. Seems crazy, I know, but they're connected. So these four things, don't let your dog, dog jump on you when you get home. Don't let your dog pull you down the street. Dog just like, yeah, I wanna pull you down the street. I'm just gonna do what I want. And then you're walking down the street and your dog flips on a dog and you're like, Whoa, stop. And you're trying to get your dog to stop. Well, he just pulled you for a mile. Why the hell would he listen to you? He didn't listen to you uh, um, five minutes ago when he pulling you. Why would he listen to you now that he's freaking out? Okay, don't let your dog pull you. Don't let your dog jump on you. When you say come, dog ends up to you. I just did a video yesterday on recall. When your dog's cruising around and you say calm and they say, nah, I don't feel like it. Why would they listen to you any time in life if they just blow you off when you say come? All right, and the last one is sleeping in bed with you. They are not, the dog is not your significant other. They are not, you are on the bed and they are down here. I don't wanna get anthropomorphic with it and act like it's some crazy dominance thing. It's not, but it is a, it is a way to tell your dog who is attacking other dogs that you are the boss. Off the bed. Dog goes, no, you grab him, you get him off the bed. Then the next day you're out, you come out here and your dog goes at a dog and you go, hey, and they go, oh, that's that serious lady who pulls me off the bed. You see how those things transfer? This is attitude stuff. This is being different with your dog's stuff. I don't care if your dog sleeps in the bed. I don't care if your dog jumps on you. If your dog is aggressive, those days are over. You have to trust me. I know you do trust me. That's why you're watching this channel. I didn't come up with this stuff one day because it seemed like it might work or I read it in a book or I saw it on a show. I came up with this because I saw the correlation between the lady who lets the dog sleep in bed with her and the dog jumps all over her and then the dog comes out here and is aggressive. Now, does every aggressive dog jump on the person? No, but there is a correlation. And when you start to get serious about these other things, coming to you, pulling you, jumping on you, sleeping in bed with you, you start to get serious about this stuff, then you start to get serious. And dogs understand serious people. Dogs don't attack dogs around serious people. I am serious. You've seen it, you comment on it. That's why I put out that bloopers video so you know I'm not always serious. But around dogs, I've dealt with so much aggression. I'm a serious guy around dogs because all I deal with is aggression. But I don't deal with it. I don't deal with that much aggression. They don't really mess around around me because I'm serious. Now, does that mean we don't enjoy dogs? Absolutely not. But you have to err on the side of being overly serious. I have to err on the side of being less serious. You've got to err on the other side. So I'm trying to get you to err on the serious side because then you can scale it back if you need to, but err on the side of being too serious because you're being not serious enough right now or not serious in the right ways. I just gave you the ways. Start there, those four ways. Dogs in the bed, and, and if, if they can't even lay in the bed when you're not there. If you see it, you come in, you tell them off and they go, no, 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 there's no no to mom anymore. There's no, I'm just gonna do what I want anymore. Okay, your dog's attacking dogs. Your dog's attacking people. Okay, we're over it. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. My clarifying my stance on e-collars and sleeping in bed with you and the problems with that. All right, have a great weekend, you guys. Uh, love you guys. Like, subscribe, and comment.